Okay, so we'll get started. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, emerging workflow, responsive web design. Anybody here know it? I, I kind of feel like I'm walking into the lion's den here. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a designer, right? So, you know, I, the conversation usually is, God damn developer. <laughs> and then you guys, you know, you, that freak wired up on weed, what's he know? <laughs> And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, maybe some new relationships that we have developed and a new workflow is starting to emerge and I thought I'd give you the benefit of what I've been learning. So the first question I'm going to answer, of course you're all looking at me wondering, who is this guy? <clears throat> I'm a professor of interactive multimedia at Humber College in Toronto, been there for years, been very active in the Toronto community, as a matter of fact one of the founders of this giant Kevin, yeah, was one of my students. I'm an Adobe community professional. Uh, my, one of my jobs is a community professional. It's just, it's just a name. Okay? And, and I'm also uh, an education leader. So I just go out and I talk to educators and I go around the universities around the world lecturing about some of the stuff I've learned in class and how to use their stuff. And I'm a writer and a tutorialist. I've written uh, 17 books. I'm currently writing a new one, uh, The Definitive Guide to HTML5 Video for uh, APRESS. And I'm up to my eyeballs in uh, JavaScript, and I am just shuddering when I hit uh, the RTC stuff. And of course, I'm a speaker and lecturer, so that's kind of who I am. All right. I'm kind What's of your name again? Fred. <laughs> Fred. Nice to you. Tom Green. <laughs> so I'm going to welcome you to the chaos because the chaos started with mobile first. Do you remember Luke Robluski? Anybody familiar with Luke? Yeah, good old Luke. Luke says, well, you know, we're doing all these uh, designs and uh, shit. <laughs> it's just not working because everybody's going mobile. So he says, maybe we should think about going mobile first, which kind of shook everybody up. And then along comes HTML5 because Flash kind of got deep sixed. And for those of you that are saying Flash sucks, uh, yeah, okay, it doesn't. All right, it's got a place for it. It's just the HTML5 was a steamroller that went over it. And uh, so it disappeared in the mobile space. Then, of course, there was iOS, which said, uh, we hate Flash. And then there was Android, which said, we hate iOS. <laughs> and then there were tablets, which, it's the weirdest thing. My dad is 92 years old, and I went over to have lunch with him today, and uh, he's sitting, at, sitting in his chair, going through his tablet. I bought him an Android tablet. <laughs> it's by the time my dad grew up. <laughs> And then, of course, we're with the uh, introduction of good old Windows, we're into flat design, so everything's in chaos. And as a teacher, you can imagine my surprise, right? Every year, I'm just a little, no, not this year. Let's start the course over again. So the chaos is really starting to settle down. Um, we're starting to see best practices emerge, especially around workflow. Uh, but it is still in flux. And one of the things that uh, a lot of people are not quite happening on to is that it is a developer designer workflow and you guys have got to work with the designers, the designers got to work with you right at the start. Okay? And there is no straight path yet. That's why I have that photograph. I love that photo. And they got a little path and then some dork goes and steps right across the right They're just going in their own direction. And that's kind of the way, you know, we're, we've got this workflow that we're very used to, going to the big screen and all that, and then all of a sudden, boom. Just to give you an idea of just how bad it got, this is the uh, Device Central from W. Anybody familiar with Device Central from Dr. Colin? You must remember that one. Uh, it was uh, basically a dog's breakfast. Adobe tried to uh, keep up with uh, Flash Player on every device on the planet, and it was, it was astounding. We would be at uh, ActionScript 3.0, and there were devices that would not take video, would not take action, or they would only take ActionScript 1.0. Good old Tell Target. I, it was just unbelievable. It, it just, it was horrible. And finally, HTML5 said, no, enough of that, and so away we went. So we now have an emerging workflow. Uh, the workflow, as I said, is team-based. Uh, you guys got to get real clear on that one. It is an emerging workflow. It is team-based. It is designers and developers working together, probably with uh, whoever the suits are or whoever's in charge of the project, but you're all working together, including the client because the client doesn't have a damn clue what's going on. They just come in and go, yeah, I'd like for this to be mobile. You heard that one? Yeah, I want this to be mobile. How mobile do you want it? Not sure, but it really looks great on my iPhone. 
What about Android? Oh, no, we're not touching that. <clears throat> the, the workflow is complex. Um, it's not a straight line that's going to sort of zig and zag all over the place. And it's under constant change. You be aware of that one. Okay? It's constantly changing. You've got to adapt. You cannot sit back and say, well, this is the way it is, because it isn't. And there are some new tools developing out there. You guys, I'm going to <clears throat> sort of go through them, and I'll show you a couple from Adobe. Uh, the first one is Adobe Reflow. You know, look, these things are responsive web design and app tools. But look, folks, don't drink Kool-Aid. Clear? Don't drink the Kool-Aid. I'm out there telling designers and developers, you use applications like Reflow and the other ones I'm going to show you, they are for prototyping. Making the damn thing work, that's your job. That's why you've got to be involved right from the start. But these are not designed to kick out the final product. Got that? Uh, another one is Macaw. Anybody familiar with Macaw? No? Oh, folks. Please get, get out there. Uh, Webflow, anybody familiar with that one? A couple of uh, Macaw, by the way, here's a, here's a great one. Uh, Adobe threw a team together and uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, developing Reflow. <coughs> Two Italian developers came, got together and said, you know, maybe we could develop a responsive web design pro uh, application that works right in the browser. So the two of them did it. It's called the car. It's pretty sweet. Uh, Webflow is another one. Uh, Antitype. This one's out of Germany. Anybody familiar with Antitype? Wow. <laughs> okay, so Antitype is for developing apps. And it uh, uses the pair. I'm not going to be going into them tonight. But it uses the paradigm of building an app using little bits and pieces from a library. So you're just sort of building it away and then adding the interactivity. But at some point, it goes over to you, and it's up to you to make it to work. And so we're going to start. The familiar and the new. This is kind of the way this new workflow is coming out. It's familiar and the new. The familiar, we're all used to designing on paper, are we not? Those tools I just showed you, you're designing in the browser. They all are browser-based. So that means you can get away from actually bopping around between browsers and, you know, write a little bit of code test it, right? Code test it. You can actually develop all this stuff, put it together visually with your designer, put it up, and it works the way it's supposed to work. Uh, the client is involved right from the start. <clears throat> and you really got to be clear on the, with the client on this one that it's going to be a process and that the client has to approve everything, and you've got to have a deter you've got to determine what the client approves. Because I've talked to a number of agencies uh, over the past year, and the clients are involved in everything, right from uh, the wireframes, the paper wireframes, right up to the, the final comps. So you've got to be aware of this one. You've got to decide how the client is involved. Uh, the tools are used differently. Who here uses Photoshop? Woohoo! Everybody loves Photoshop, right? Well, guess what? It's now a responsive web design tool if you use Adobe products. I'll show you a couple of things I can do tonight. Uh, Illustrator. Who uses Illustrator? SVG, right? SVG, pain in the ass. I swear to God that that's what SVG stands for. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, SVG workflow out of uh, Illustrator is, is basically save as. And I don't know if anybody's encountered this one, but you know, you've got to get rid of layers and stuff like that. And you discover that as you're creating these stupid SVG files, there's always extra stuff in there bumping up the file size. And you think, what the hell, where did that come from? If so, they, Adobe actually <laughs> listened to us and said, we're going to make it easy on this. So I'm going to show you an easy way of doing it tonight. And it is all about change and disruption. Uh, not only are you going to be designing in the browser, which is Reflow over there, but you're also going to be testing on multiple devices. Uh, Adobe has a great little application. Again, I'm not an Adobe guy, but boy, I'll tell you, if I've got something that makes my life simpler, I'm going to use it. And one of the little pieces that they have that works with the Chrome browser is called Edge Inspect. Has anybody used Inspect? What a sweet little app that one is, and you're looking at it right there. Uh, on my uh, Big Mac, I've got a, that design is a, is a wireframe, and the device on the left is my uh, Mac, is my iPad, 
It, beside it is my Google uh, phone. Uh, that is a Samsung Galaxy Tab. Uh, there's a cheap Chinese phone in there, there's an iPhone, and there's a Motorola Zoom. And all you do is you go click, and it goes right across all of them. So you can actually start looking at your designs right in the devices you're going to be using. Are you going to have every device on the planet sitting on a desk? No. So you, you know, you've got to make some choices. And it starts with an idea in the notebook. I love this picture. Yeah, I felt so guilty. I'm sitting on the go train and this, watching the, you know, you do what the go train does, right? You're sitting there looking at the window, brain was like. Yeah, and I just happen to look over and she pulls out a moleskin and starts sketching. So surreptitiously out comes the camera. <laughs> and I just love that because that's that's the way it starts. The client will come to you with an idea. So I, I don't have to tell my students, the client doesn't have a goddamn clue what he or she wants until you until you show them what he or she wants. They, they don't know what they want until they see it. And if they tell you, I want my competitors, that's when you sort of gently show them the door. But it starts with an idea and a notebook. And you just start sketching. And there are all kinds of notebooks out there. Oops. You can start small. There's a moleskin. Just you know, sketch boxes. That's all you need, by the way, boxes. And I want to explain, there's a new, new way of doing it, too. Uh, use one or two sketches as you jump, uh, jump off point. Maybe you can get the client say, yeah, I kind of get that. OK, fine, move on. Uh, then use larger pages to rough out the details. And don't forget to be guided by the content wireframe. Anybody here familiar with the content wireframe? God bless you. That's what I do. I mean, user experience there. Yeah. <laughs> Developers. <laughs> Developers. <laughs> Look. It starts with content wireframe. It's content first. And when I say content, I'm not saying pretty pictures and text. It's boxes and arrows. How am I doing? OK, am I making your life easier? It basically is just boxes and arrows. And that's kind of the first step in the process. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to just pop over this. I'm going to pop over the reflow. And there it is, right there. There's a content wireframe. This is uh, starting at three. By the way, <clears throat> mobile first. Who here has been drinking the mobile first Kool-Aid? God bless you. You really, if you're going to be using these apps, it's irrelevant. You're going to get to the same point whichever way you go. If you want to start mobile first, you know you can do that in Reflow. And if you want to start mobile first, you can do it in the car. If you want to start in the desktop and work your way in, fine. If you start in the desktop, you're going to wind up there. If you start there, you're going to wind up over on the desktop. Yes, ma'am. So, and maybe this is an unfair edge, maybe it's too early, but what about the difference between responsive design versus adaptive design? Because you can start global with first with a responsive design and you figure out what you're going to have to blow up from there. But you have something that's adaptive, you have different kinds of models depending on what device they might be using at the time. You've got to be careful with that. and. Uh, uh, these here force you into a responsibility. And basically what she's saying is that you sort of finish? What what she basically says is you start with your devices or your targets and develop there. That's wrong. Okay, in a responsive world, that's wrong. It's breakpoints. Where does the design break? Okay, that's what the word breakpoint really means. Where does the design break? An adaptive design, if it's not as you know, if you're walk in, yeah, of course. But a lot of people are going responsive simply because of the fact you have no control over how the user is going to view it. Okay, then the adaptive design sort of forces you into that box. And I don't like people that, I don't mean that in a negative sense. I don't want people starting to think, well, this is going to be the smartphone, and this is going to be the, you know, this the Samsung Galaxy Tab, and this is going to be the tablet, and this is going to be the desktop, and this one here is going to be the Jumbotron of Dumbass. Okay, you, that's locking yourself in. And your design thinking stays there. Where does the design break? What about the guys that have got phones that are in between? What about the guys that have got tablets that are in between? How's it going to look on those? That's where responsive comes in. Okay? I think there's a place for adaptive, but uh, we're moving totally into a responsive uh, universe. But this is a typical, typical content uh, wireframe, just boxes. 
And this is Reflow, and all I have to do is just click here. And, oops. Come on. There we go. It pops out. Now this is the little hamburger in here, and then we move into tablet size. We really don't need it. It's gone. Notice how the design changes, because the, it broke. Okay, the design broke. The header is nice. Yeah, okay, fine. And then we move out to desktop size, and it changes again, just as it moves in. And this is what I mean by working in the browser. This uh, application here works with a uh, with the uh, Chrome browser. So you can just pull it in and out and you can see how the content expands and contracts and you can uh, set it up that way. Okay? So that's where the content wireframe comes in. Once the content wireframe is agreed to, then you can start setting up for content. And that's where you start deciding what's going to go in these boxes. All right? Now, a couple other things that uh, you can do. I'm sorry, was there a question? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so uh, the wireframe itself, right? Like, do you have to set the width at, like, at some point? No. Like, no, no, like, no dude, dude, this is all CSS. These are all CSS properties. So you, you can just throw in percentages. You know, if you want to put it, if you want to hard, hardware a number in there and knock yourself out, but just remember, you need to get down smaller in the number there. Yeah. yeah. So this is all CSS, and this thing actually does kick out CSS. Does it kick out good CSS? No, because in this crowd, the only good code that's ever written is the code you write. How am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you know, it's a jumping off point. It is an absolute jumping off point. Is it going to be the final step? No. Is it production ready? No. It's not. Not even close. Yes, ma'am. You know what? The break, first break, if I'm going mobile first, I start at 320. Yeah, okay, because that's the iPhone screen, and then infinity and beyond. <laughs> uh, if I want to start with the desktop, I'll start with my first, first break point on the desktop, about 1200. Next one, about 900. But again, once I start moving it in, you know, if it breaks, then that's where a break point goes. And what will happen is, is that these applications will actually write the media queries. Do you like that? Yeah, no more media queries. Right. It'll break the media queries. No, it'll write the media query. The CSS will contain all the media queries in it. So you, you know you can open up the CSS, take a look at it, and go, wow, is that ever new? Or just say this is bullshit and do it again. I mean, you're the developer, right? You... Sir. Are these based on the browser width or the device? Like I go to a lot of websites. Uh, uh, no, bad question. bad question. Bad question. Okay, is these based on the browser with it? No. Again, get it here. Break point where design breaks. Okay, so if something shifts over at a certain point, it could be 915 pixels over. If the design breaks, that's where a break point goes. And you I have guess to... what I'm thinking is sometimes, I mean, you know, it seems that it's responsive. Well, it doesn't bother it's, me. It's, I'm, not on a, I'm not on a smartphone, I'm still on my desktop, right? But all of a sudden it, it's hiding the menus. Yeah, but you can take these, you can take these, uh, these things, view them actually in the browser. So there, you know, there's, there's the page of the browser, and all I have to do is just yank the window in and out, and the breakpoints break are, are in play. There we go. See? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So right now, when you make it a bit smaller, yeah. Acting as if I'm on a smartphone, but you're not on a smartphone. You're no. On, you're on desktop. No, but you're you're dealing with pixel width, okay? You're you're dealing with where the design breaks. My question really is: Is there any move to change the response to design from being based on the width of the browser to the actual device that you're on? Yeah, you can. Okay, there, 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 you can you can put that into the uh, the metadata. Uh, you can also the user media queries for that. It, you know, the, the width pixel. When we're 700 pixels wide, this is what it looks like. The window of the monitor and not the... The browser window. We're talking about the window. Okay? Yeah, I think we're on different... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's window the... versus device. Not device, window. Yeah, but like, you also have to like, you know, think about 
That's the viewpoint. Why would you want like a small and narrow screen? Like, well, that's why would you want the I mean, I just don't like when I change the browser width, and all of a sudden the website thinks that I'm on. Okay, let's let's back up here. Uh, uh, the terminology is viewport. Right. Okay, that's that's what's changing now is the viewport. Yeah. It doesn't say, oh look, it's a smartphone. When it switches the design, that's where the breakpoint is. You control it. Okay, what I've done here with this one. Well, that's fine. Okay, we'll take that offline. Exactly. Offline. <laughs> Yeah, you two uh, go do it out yourselves. <laughs> Another uh, thing you can do, once you get past the uh, wire frame, you can then start taking your designs and whip them open in Photoshop. And I'll tell you right now, you are talking to a guy that uh, uh, would tell his students, if I see you designing websites in Photoshop, I will take you uh, and beat you up. <laughs> okay, and. Uh, I have never felt that, I always felt that was like using an atom bomb to light your barbecue, designing a web page in Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta light the barbecue, but, but you know, the Adobe guys have kind of said, okay, fine, what can we do with this? Well, one of the things they've done, you know, anybody here, uh, uh, sitting with CC? Great, there's a little feature built right into the uh, file menu right here. It's called a generate, and you can see image assets, and Edge Repo Project. And essentially what happens is, is you take the image assets and you just give them the file extension for the images. Don't worry about the text, it'll move in. And then you just generate it. And it will create a separate folder for all the assets and it's up to you to figure out what to do with it. But if you want to create a responsive web page in Reflow, for instance, all you gotta do is generate for Reflow. It creates the whole thing and it, then it's up to the designer to you know, make sure that everything works. And it, it happens like that. That's the thing that kills me about this. So if I, uh, okay, this is, uh, remember, workflow, all right? <laughs> this is not gospel. So I can uh, generate the page right here just by selecting as reflow project. And that's what you see, boom, done. And what, what, it, what it does is it opens up a the folder, there's the file. And there it is. Now, I've got that on a black background, so if I throw a black background on there, you'll see the text, but it just basically rebuilt the page. Here's another thing that you can do with a repo. See this little Photoshop thing here? This is, again, workflow, right? Workflow, you want to be efficient? You don't want to waste your time? The client says, okay, fine, we need a second page. And you go, oh, man, I've got to develop a second page. Well, you've already got it in the bank, right? It's developed in Photoshop. Well, you can actually, just right here in Reflow, if you've got this done, just over here, and say, look, have, I already have the file open. There it is there. Create a new page. And it will take the open Photoshop document and create a brand new page for it. Then it will link to it. So there are all kinds of little productivity improvements that are built in here. Okay, so the wizards at, at Adobe, I don't know how they do that. I honestly don't. But the wizards at Adobe have kind of figured out they want to make it a little bit more efficient. But again, Let's get real clear on this. This is not production ready. This is something you can show the client and go, hey, aren't I clever? Is this kind of what you want? And then when the client says, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for, over to you, where you can write your own code. OK, I'm going to wrap up with one final thing. And that is, remember what I told you about SVG being a pain in the ass? Well, it's no longer a pain in the ass. I don't know if you guys noticed this. So what I've got here, this is a little best practice I've developed because I learned it from a very good friend of mine who's going beyond us, uh, Henry Curtis. He, uh, back in 2000, I was sitting in his office and he was asking me questions about developing. And because I work in Canada, I was familiar with working with languages. And he showed me a project he was working on with uh, HP. And it came from India. It was all Sanskrit and the whole bit. And he said, how would you do that? And I said, well, real simple. I'd get their Indian agency to send me the Illustrator files, and then I'd just you know, plunk them in. He said, good idea. Let's talk. So this is the uh, Chinese character for uh, Beijing. And what I want to do is just drop it into Reflow and Edge Animate. Now, here's where it gets really cool. 
Remember in Illustrator is file, save as, and then you'd have to come here, and then you do, oh, yeah, okay, we'll go with that one, I think. And so you click save, and then up comes this weird dialog box asking you all these bizarre questions. Which version do you want to use, and how are you going to handle the fonts, and yada, 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 yada. And it was just, you could never figure it out. I always found myself coming here four or five times. If you have a current version of Elsewhere CC plus uh, Reflow or Edge Animate, watch this. All I have to do now is just take the, select what I want, and this works with icons or any drawing that you have on the Illustrator uh, page. Copy, and then I'm going to go back to Reflow, and I'm just going to open up a new page, and I'm going to paste, and there it is. And if you don't believe me, I mean, when they showed me this, I'm like, get the hell out of here. There's the library, and there it is, SVG. The newest version of Animate has a very cool... Right. Huh? Does right. this do not still have the dirty SVG code? Pardon? Does this still have the dirty SVG code? You don't have to. It'll, it just drops it in. I, I understand, but if I want to go... Uh, Absolutely. What's your problem? <laughs> like I said, I don't work for a And if I come to uh, animate, all I got to do is do paste, and this new dialog box opens up, uh, opens up, and it says pasted SVG. Now, if you want to have a whole bunch of pasted SVG, but basically what you do is you just name it, you click OK, and bazinga. You've got your SVG document, and if you want to put it in motion, knock yourself out. So that's kind of what I was going to talk about tonight, a little bit of uh, a workflow and uh, trying to make your life easier. Uh, also suggesting that you start talking to designers, and that designers get off the pot and talk to you as well. So thank you. That's my email address if you want to you know, send me bones or... Uh, Call me names or anything like that. I have a very thick skin. I get it all the time. Uh, yes, sir. One minute. Uh, are, these, are there tools built in for things like modifications? What do you mean of by existing, modification? Of existing designs, or like say building themes, for example. Let's say that the design project is just to build themes. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there built in tools for that, or is that just oh, yeah. purely for just speculative design? And... For building themes, uh, you know, if you're going to be iterating on them or, or just basically having a whole a bunch of separate documents. Mm -hmm. I think you've really got to rethink that one because Reflow is basically, I like telling people it's page layout for responsive design. It's a great way of thinking about it. Uh, it, it has a library, yes, but you can't share assets in the library. It's more like a sketching tool. It's not like a sketching tool. Well, it sounds like more static than dynamic. You can't do anything with it after. Can you do things with it after you're done with Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Like, what what's the code that it's generating? It's lousy code. I keep telling everybody there's a thousand code. Let me see if I can find. I apologize for opening edge code. I'm sure that you all have your preferred editors. Yeah, we know. This is where I did not want to go tonight. Thanks for smoking me in. Okay, uh, let's go back to that. And we'll take a look at the HTML. Okay, so there's the HTML. Okay, and there's a CSS style sheet that's kicked in. By the way, the new version of Reflow, see that first line? This is only for preview. They actually now have a new menu item that says put uh, output HTML, and you can output. It's it's fairly clean, but again, with this crowd, no, it's not. You know, it's not the way you'd like it. And then there's the CSS that's associated with this file, and I'll just go hide once I put it up. Uh, there it is. 
and solar, because everything on that oh, there it is. Everything in the reflow interface, the Macaw interface, the anti-type interface, everything that you see that allows you to put stuff somewhere and change the properties and whatever, they're all CSS functions. So it's like a visual editor for CSS, which again sucks, right? But again, if the client is looking for an idea, this is where we're going. This is what we think we can do. Are you happy with it? And then, yeah, fine. Let it rip. Then we take the project and over to you. And because you have been involved right from the start, you know exactly what the client's expecting. So you can go to work and be more, far more efficient too. But that was your first point, right? That you're sketching to it's not a... I don't know if it's, well, I call it a prototyping tool. Let's call it a prototyping, because for me, a sketching tool is pull out a pen. OK, I'm a designer, all right? Thank you. All right, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, so how deep do you get into the prototyping with this particular tool? Because the other big contender on the market, or one that at least is a standard amongst user experience designers, is Action RP. And you can do things like have a sticky menu and that kind of stuff. It just depends on how far you want to go. Yeah. You know, they all do the same thing, right? I'm not telling you that you got to use this one. I don't know. No, no, for sure. But I'm just, I mean, out of curiosity, I'm just wondering how high fidelity can you go with it? As far as you want to go, as far as the budget, as soon as the client says edge, that's where you stop, right? So, you know, if the client says unlimited budget, you go, yes. <laughs> but if the client says, well, you know, I'm kind of poor, that's where you start pulling out reflow ad type. Because these things are all on the web and free. Okay, any other questions? None? They're all out. Uh, Antitype is in beta, and in the past three months, or in the past six months, we've been about six revisions to it. They're constantly changing it. Uh, Macaw is still developing, and Webflow, same thing. Okay? Any other questions? No? Thank you.